Cause I still believe in your faithfulness Cause I still believe in your truth Cause I still believe in your holy word Even when I don't see, I still believe. Scattered words and empty thoughts seem to pour from my heart. I've never felt so torn before. Seems I don't know where to start But it's now that I feel Your grace fall like rain From every fingertip Washing away my pain Cause I still believe in your faithfulness I still seem to bear well, Even when answers slowly unwind It's my heart I see you prepare But it's now that I feel Your grace fall like rain From every fingertip Washing away my pain be seated if you want. So I did warn her I was going to bring up a story about her tonight. When my middle daughter Claire was roughly one and a half, two years old, she, she, had, she knew how to walk. I knew that. Well, our old house, uh, we had an upstairs and it was fully carpeted stairs, upstairs and all that. I don't remember why this happened. I don't remember what I was doing in the circumstance. All I remember is one day I was in charge of watching her, and it was just her and I in the house. And we had a baby gate at the front, top of the stairs, of course. That's what you do as smart parents, right? Well, 
the top, I, I remember I was at the bottom of the stairs and I looked up, she was at the top of the stairs and had the gate open. Now, I still to this day don't remember whether she was just an absolute genius and knew how to open it herself, or if I forgot, it could have been a combination of the two. But it was open. And my mind thinking, please don't go forward. Please don't go forward. My, your, your mom will kill me. And I didn't want her to get hurt either, of course. And so, and so what does she do? She takes a step brrr, all the way down the stairs. And she is just crying like any infant would. And I pick her up, and I'm scared to death. It's like, did I just break my little girl? What, what is going on here? So I immediately call my wife and say, this is what happened. She fell down the stairs. I don't know what to do. And so my wife, smart mom, said, you know what? Give it a few minutes. See if she calms down. Do you, can you tell if anything's broken? I said, not that I can see. She was crying hysterically, which, of course, anybody would. But I gave it a few minutes. Like she said, she calmed down. She got back down. She started walking and seemed okay. And I, whew, I would have been in so much trouble. I was worried I was going to have to take her to the ER. I didn't know what was going to happen, but she seemed to be okay. Now, I don't know what happened. This is just me. Somehow, the same circumstance happened not too long after that, where she came down the stairs. I was in charge. The baby gate was open. But then I knew, at that point, I knew she would be okay because I'd seen it happen before. And sure enough, she was. Thankfully, there wasn't a third time. But I, I say that... And, and, and looking back, to do it twice, I don't think I'd make the mistake twice. I, I just really think she's going for a doctor right now. I think she was just really smart as a, as a toddler. But looking back at this time, I, as her father, I loved her to death. I would have done anything to protect her. And I wanted to be there for her. And when she fell, all she knew was my love. She knew to trust me, to pick her up, to help protect her, and to be there for her. How many times do we here on earth have times where something tragic has happened. Maybe a loved one is really hurt, really sick, or dies. Maybe there's a job loss, there's some kind of tragedy in your home, and thinking, God, where are you? Why aren't you helping me with this? Especially if you are a believer, if you are a Christian, and you trust God to be there for you. Where is he? You would think maybe a week, maybe a month, and he'll heal this. I've been praying every day, and he still doesn't do it. Where is he? And sometimes it seems like he is silent. We're talking about a, a song, Spontaneous Worship, tonight, where we're taking the song we just sang, and we're going to sing it again at the end called I Still Believe. And you need to hear the story behind this. This is about Jeremy Camp, the Christian artist. And just as his music career was about to take off, Jeremy suffered a life-changing loss. He had met the love of his life and thought that they would be together forever, which is anybody when you get ready to get married. He goes, the first time I met her, we were at a Bible study. I remember, and doing worship, said Jeremy of the real story. I looked up while playing at one point, and there she was. She was just raising her hands, just singing with no abandon. No one else is around me, she thought. I don't care who's around me, what's around me. It's just me and Jesus. And that's what kind of attracted me to her. She has a relationship with Jesus. And now that was the start of me going, okay, now, who is this girl? At the time they met, it was 1999. Jeremy was 22 and Melissa was 20. They began hanging her out and fellowshipping together and they grew really, really close. It was shortly after that they ended up getting married. But less than four months, think about your, for those of you who are married, think about the first six months of your marriage, how special that is. Four months after their marriage, the woman he expected to spend his life with, Melissa Henning, died from ovarian cancer. This isn't supposed to happen at this age, but at age 20 or 21, she died. Jeremy was 23 at the time of her death. He goes, it's the most painful part of my life. He was now 42. He goes, I believe that she was going to be healed and we would have this long love story together. And up until Melissa's death in 2001, Jeremy had always been confident in his Christian faith. He at one point considered going into the ministry himself and realized his passion for music when he started writing accompaniments and worshiping with his father, Tom, who was a, a pastor in Lafayette, Indiana. And after Melissa's death, Jeremy tried to find strength in what she had told him from the hospital bed. Think of this. She is dying from ovarian cancer. She's 21 years old, and this is what she said. She said, if one life is changed because of what I go through, this is all worth it. He recalls of his late wife's hope that if just one person would put their their lives into Christ and with their faith. That would be worth her sacrificing her life for. 
Jeremy, Jeremy struggled with his pain and frustration with God, which I think any of us would. Why would God do this? Why would God allow this? But he wrote it in the song, I Still Believe. He goes, there is hope at the end of the hardship, Jeremy says. And instead of turning my back and being an angry, bitter person at God, it made me stronger. He slowly opened up about Melissa during his concerts thereafter, and one of which his now wife, Adrienne, who is 38, a South South African-born Christian singer-songwriter, had attended one of those concerts. She had said that she had gone through a challenging time very similar to like this in her own life. And here, Jeremy talk about her story changed her life. Jeremy and Adrian connected on tour two years after Melissa's death. They married in 2003, and now they have three children. Bella, who's 15, Aria, who's 13, and Egan, 8. All three of whom are gifted musically boast their proud father. My heart is ready to explode. I am so grateful, Jeremy says of his life now. They have since made a movie from this story that's incredibly powerful by the same name, I Still Believe. If you haven't had a chance to see it, it just came out a year or two ago, and it tells the true life story of this. I Still Believe. How does somebody who's gone through such a tragic death at such a young age be able to look back and say, my heart is ready to explode. I am so grateful. It reminds me of what the prophet Isaiah tells us in in chapter 55, verses 8 through 9, where he goes, or where he's speaking, or, or translating from God, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. As the, high, as the heavens are higher than the earth, are so my ways than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. You see, we can't comprehend why God does the things he does, why he allows time to go on when we think they can be healed, and we know he has the power to heal. He created the heavens and the earth. He can do whatever he wants. Why does he allow things to happen for so long, sometimes for a lifetime? But you know what? It's his universe. He has a plan. We don't know what that is. True, if we knew why God did everything he did, how big of a God would he truly be if we could understand it? We just have to trust him because of his promises that he's given us so far. He, he works in miraculous ways. We need to trust him and have patience that his plan is greater than our plan. I don't know if you've ever read the inspirational poem called Footprints. I hadn't, I, I'd seen it, but I hadn't until a year or two ago. What's interesting is that the lady who wrote Footprints, Margaret Fishbeck, went through some incredible trials herself. The person that loved her left her. Then she caught meningitis, and it was literally bedridden for many months. She came to the lowest place of her life, and it was during this time another man fell in love with her and wanted to marry her, but she wouldn't marry him. She basically said, I'm out of trust. I'm not sure I trust God. I don't think I trust men. I am out of trust. And who can blame her what she went through? It would be hard to trust again. Well, one night in her diary, as she lay in bed, she began to write this beautiful piece, Footprints. And that night, she saw the answer. One night, a man had a dream, and he dreamt that he was walking along the beach with the Lord. Well, across the sky flashes scenes of his life. Imagine, scenes of his life. And for each scene, he noticed two sets of footprints in the sand one belonging to him and the other belonging to the Lord. After the last scene of his life flashed before him, he looked back on the footprints in the sand. He noticed that many times in the path of his life, many times there was only one set of footprints. But he also noticed that it happened at the very lowest moments of his life, in the very saddest moments of his life. This really bothered him, and he questioned the Lord about it. He said, Lord, You said that once I decided to follow follow you, you would be with me every step of the way. Lord, why when I needed you the most, the very most, would you leave me? And the Lord replied, my precious, precious child, I love you. I would never leave you. During your times of trial and suffering, when you see only one set of footprints in the sand, it was I that was carrying you. You see, we don't understand what God is doing. We often want to see the reason why are you here, but he is there. We just need to recognize that. I like how this is explained, you know, the, the song I Still Believe and the, and the lyrics talking about believing without seeing sometimes of what's going to happen. The website purpose to inspire.com tells us believing in something believe, before we see it is so contrary to human nature. 
We've been conditioned, and I know we have, we've been conditioned to see things first, and then we believe. You know the phrase, we'll see it, then we believe it. Well, life is so full of setbacks and disappointments and unkept promises. So many of us have been hurt by people, and many times we've been hurt by the people we've trusted the most. Because of the way our minds have been conditioned, sometimes we can be guilty of pouring God, putting God into that same category that we put the people in. Although the world said that seeing is believing, the Bible tells us that we should walk by faith and not by sight, as Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians. In Matthew, Matthew talks about it in his gospel in chapter 19, 26. Jesus looked at them intently and said, humanly speaking, it is impossible. But with God, everything is possible. Then in John, talks about it in his gospel in 20, 29. Then Jesus told him, you believe because you've seen me. Blessed are those who haven't seen me, yet believe anyway. Then the writer of Psalms 33, 4 tells us, For the word of the Lord holds true, and we can trust what he says and what he does. Then the author of Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie. He is not a human that we should change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has he ever promised and not carried it through? Mother Teresa is famous for saying, I know God will not give me anything I can't handle. I wish he just didn't trust me so much. Now, there's humor in that, but for those who are Christians, there's nowhere in Scripture that God will not give us more than we can handle. He specifically allows things to happen, and often, most often, we put ourselves in situations where we have things we can't handle where we need help, and it's those times that we're reminded how much we need God because we can't do it on our own, can't handle it ourselves. The first words of the song that we sing, that we're going to re-sing here, Jeremy goes, remember, think of the lens of where he was coming from. His wife, young wife that he loved had just passed away. And he said, scattered words and empty thoughts seem to pour from my heart. I've never felt so torn before. It seems I don't know where to start, but it's now that I feel your grace fall like rain. So as in much despair and anguish and hurt that he's in, he feels God's grace falling over him like rain. We've just been in rain the past few days. Think of what that's like just washing over you. From every fingertip, washing away my pain. Because I still believe in your faithfulness. I still believe in your truth. I still believe in your holy word even when I don't see I'm still going to believe we know we can trust God and his word because of what Jesus said I've said this many times up here if you haven't heard me say it before I don't want you to believe the Bible because I say you should believe it I don't want you to believe it because other pastors or maybe you brought up your parents told you to believe it I want you to believe it because Jesus believed it was all true Jesus was there with God from the very beginning And we know we can believe what Jesus did because he gave his life for us. He's the only man in history that's died and been resurrected. He did this in front of a multitude of witnesses who saw that, and then ended up, many of them ended up giving their own lives as martyrs because they'd seen that everything he said was true. That's where we have our faith. That's how we know that everything that God has said in our scriptures, in our Bible, is true because the man that gave his life, God's only son, was sacrificed. So me, and you could have eternal life. And that's how we know that we can trust him. Even when we don't see, we can trust him. Even if we know what's not going on with our lives, with our kids' life, with our grandkids' lives, our parents. And I think back as a parent, I love my kids so much, but even I can't love my kids as much as God loves each one of us who is made in his image. That kind of love is indescribable. I didn't know how God would heal me after losing my father when I was nine years old. After I lost my job in 2003 or last, this past year when it happened again. Or when I lost over $100,000 in a, in a failed business venture of my doing. But through it all, I can still say, I still believe. And I have the joy that God gives that to me. Will you repeat that after me? I still believe. I still believe. Will you pray with me? God, I thank you for the words you've given us. I thank you for the scriptures, the promises. You've laid out so much. Your word has never failed. Everything you've told us happens. Sometimes it's so hard to be patient, 
It's human nature that we're in a society where we want things just like that. We want things to happen quickly, especially when there's injustice or there's, there's pain that makes no sense. It's so easy to blame you and, and not to trust you. But the beauty of all this, God, is that you know that. You know our innermost thoughts, and you still love us through that, even through our doubts, even through our fears, even for the times that many of us walk away from you. You still love us unconditionally. You are still there for us that when we're ready to put our trust in you, you pick us back up in your arms and you let us know you've never left us. Give us that hope as we leave here today to put all of our trust in you and everything that happens in the good or bad that we will trust you, that we still believe in you because of your promises and for the hope and the future of eternal life. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you'd like to stand for a final song. Cause I still believe in your faithfulness. Cause I still believe in your truth. Cause I still believe in your holy word even when I don't see I still believe but it's now that I feel your grace fall like rain fingertip washing away my pain sing that song for the second time, understanding that story, understanding how it was written. I think so many times there's a lot of songs, especially when I listen to Christian songs, that I don't really pay attention to the words, but you really hear the true story behind them and the pain and the feeling, the love that comes from these. It helps us understand, interpret God working through those lives. Now, if God spoke spoke to you today and, and you want to make a decision for him, If you haven't followed him up to this time and you'd like to, you can still do that. Come and see me after the service. If you're online and watching and would like to do that, let us know we can help you have Christ as your Savior today so you can have this eternal life. Have that feeling that even in the worst and the darkest times that God is always with you. 
Now, I do want to remind you that we are a little bit early, so if you have kids downstairs, it is going till 7.30, so we have 10, 15 minutes. So if you want to kind of go out the front doors or just wait to go downstairs till 7.30, but don't forget, Papa Curl's ice cream is supposed to be outside, so maybe a good time to linger out there and get ready to get some ice cream before the kids go. Thank you for coming, and hope to see you next week. Have a great night.